Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Friday, June 30th. This is Gina McGuire. Over the next couple of days, we'll see very dry conditions with lighter winds today, but as we go through the weekend, we will see some high base showers or even very isolated thunderstorms on Saturday potentially affect the higher elevations of Idaho into northeast Nevada and northwest Utah. But right now, lightning coverage in the areas over Nevada and Utah look very isolated at best. On Sunday, we may see better potential for drier thunderstorms over the higher terrain of Utah, and we have issued high risk for some of these areas where ERCs are very high for the time of year. Over the last 24 hours, we've only seen some light areas of rainfall over eastern Idaho and Wyoming associated with some lightning activity with very dry conditions over the rest of the basin. Yesterday, we only saw light initial attack across the Great Basin, but we still do have some ongoing large fires, namely the Bryan Head in southwest Utah. Over the last seven days, we've seen precipitation mainly focused across Idaho and Wyoming. And over the last 30 days, again, the precipitation has been focused over the northern half of the area, with most areas below normal, with the exception of small areas of southwest Idaho into northern Nevada. Very dry conditions continue over the southern half of the Great Basin, where many areas have not seen measurable rainfall in the last one to three months. How this has affected our current fuel conditions, ERCs are above the 90th or 97th percentile over the southern half of the Great Basin, and in some of these areas over southeast Nevada and the southern half of Utah, these ERCs are approaching or at record highs. Further north, ERCs are lower, however, are near normal for the time of year, and it's been mainly the grass crop over the northern half of the Great Basin that has been driving our large fire activity. In those areas, fuels are cured. Looking at our live fuel moistures, you can see in the sagebrush across Utah, fuel moistures have been decreasing significantly and very rapidly and are actually near record minimums. Over Nevada, sagebrush is near normal for the time of year. The satellite loop from this morning shows now a ridge of high pressure moving into the west coast, and this will bring sunny skies to the Great Basin area-wide, along with lighter winds, warming temperatures, and continued dry conditions. All of our lightning today should be focused further east. Looking at the weather pattern by this afternoon, the ridge of high pressure slides further east with warming conditions and continued very dry weather across the entire Great Basin. Also, winds will be quite a bit lighter with continued light to moderate fire potential, with the exception of low fire potential in the central Idaho mountains. Today's single-digit relative humidity will continue across Nevada and Utah and be slightly higher further north. However, again, winds will be decreasing today, so we'll see more typical light to moderate winds. On Saturday, we have a trough of low pressure that's moving into the west coast, and this will bring some clouds and some high base showers to parts of Idaho, northeast Nevada, and northwest Utah. However, right now, the best lightning potential looks to be in the central Idaho mountains, where our fuel moistures are still a little bit higher. Therefore, we have no high risk issued for Saturday. Relative humidity will remain low in the south and a little bit higher as you get further north. However, on Saturday, ahead of that trough, you can see the winds will be increasing over the southern and eastern half of Nevada into southwest Utah. However, right now, wind speeds will likely remain gusting between 25 and 30 miles per hour and below criteria. On Sunday, that trough moves further east, and our moisture slides further east into Utah and Wyoming for some isolated dry thunderstorms over the higher terrain of central and northeast Utah. It's these areas where our ERCs are very high for the time of year, so we have issued high risk for lightning, even though right now, right now coverage looks like it will remain isolated. On Sunday, relative humidity will remain again quite low over the southern two-thirds of the area, and increase a little bit to above 10 or 15 percent in the higher terrain of Utah where we are expecting those isolated thunderstorms. However, winds as, the, as that trough slides eastward will increase over the eastern half of Utah, still likely remaining below criteria, but we could see some very gusty outflow winds from even high base showers that do not have any lightning. The overall forecast amount of precipitation for the next three days is very light. Any precipitation we see with thunderstorms will likely be minimal. As we move into the actual July 4th holiday on Monday, we will see generally ridging of high pressure across the Great Basin, bringing very warm temperatures, but generally light to moderate wind flow, and it looks like dry conditions area-wide. Therefore, we will see our fuels continue to dry out, but we have no high risk issued for Monday. On Tuesday, similar conditions with that strong ridge building across the Great Basin. Therefore, our temperatures will increase to near 100 degrees in areas over northern Nevada and Utah in the valleys and near 110 over parts of southern areas of the Great Basin. We have not issued any high risk as winds will remain light with dry conditions. However, again, being the July 4th holiday, fuels will be very dry and our humid ignitions may be up over the weekend. 
As we move into Wednesday, into the later portion of next week, we will see a significant change in the weather. With this ridge of high pressure now moving off to the east, it is allowing some initial monsoon moisture to move up north over the Great Basin. There will, therefore, we'll start seeing some better chances for lightning as we move into the mid to late portion of next week. Coverage and exact area of where the lightning will occur is still uncertain, but all areas of the Great Basin should be on watch as we get towards mid to late next week. This will continue into Thursday and likely continue through the following weekend into the next week. Therefore, we will see increases to fire potential. It's just uncertain exactly which areas and timing at this point. Overall forecast amount of precipitation for the seven days, again, remaining fairly light and just associated with any thunderstorm activity. But again, we'll be on the lighter side. The 8 to 14 day outlook, which takes us from July 7th through the 13th, shows continued above normal temperatures in the west with below normal precipitation. However, that may be changing as we see that initial push of monsoon moisture, especially as we get into the third week in July. But at least through next week and next weekend, any lightning activity we see is likely not to be producing much appreciable rainfall. That concludes our briefing for today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you for listening.